Well, praise God. People of God, welcome to the broadcast. Welcome to the room. This is an exciting day. This is double seven, seven, seven. And it's not a coincidence. You are here. It's a God thing. It's a divine appointment. People of God, in a few minutes, we're going to have the man of God, one and only prophet, Charlie Champ, probably one of the most premier prophetic voices in our nation, uh, recognized globally. This man of God is a general in the prophetic. And we're excited to have you. Friends, if you're excited to receive from the men of God today, as you're coming out, I want you to comment extreme prophetic. Amen. And and the reason why I've titled this broadcast extreme prophetic is because, uh, you know, if you're going to do anything, then why not be extreme? Amen. Why not go all the way? Because God is not a half-hearted uh, type of person. He's not a half-hearted God. He's all the way. He's all in. And uh, I believe we need to double down on prophecy. We need to go even deeper into the things that are prophetic. In fact, Apostle Paul says, do not despise prophecy, for with it you will wage war. So there's going to be impartation today, revelation, insight. So comment below where you're watching from. Give us some hearts and likes. Share, share, share. Tag somebody. If you are an emerging prophetic voice, or you are connected to a prophetic hub community. I want you to tag somebody. I want you to share this on your wall. Invite your friends, amen. Because in a couple of minutes, we're going to bring in the man of God, Prophet Charlie Shatt. Praise God. I see you here on YouTube. I see you here on Facebook. Help us to build the room and the algorithm and the atmosphere. Amen. I believe today we're going to break through some things in the spirit. We're going to break through some things in the supernatural. Amen. And of course, for us, we just finished one month, 12 cities, 10 revivals in the United States. So now uh, as we finish that in the month of June, I'm expecting ready to receive. And even today is a part of receiving and uh, being edified in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Something happens. When the right anointings gifts come together, there's a collaboration, a convergence, a synergy, an activation. And it's always a great honor, privilege, pleasure to be around men and women of God, the generals of the faith. Can you say amen? So continue to give us some hearts and likes. Let's build the room, build the algorithm, because I'm going to bring in the man of God in the next minute here. Praise God. So continue to. Build the room and the algorithm and the atmosphere. Comment below where you are watching from. Amen. And we're so excited to have the man of God, Prophet Charlie Champ, here with us. Amen. Extreme prophetic in the mighty name of Jesus. I see you from Albuquerque. God bless you. Hershey, Pennsylvania. From Hungary, bless you. Houston, Texas. Watching from Texas, South Africa, my great South Africa family. Netherlands, bless you. Hartman, Maryland, Alberta, Canada. Amen. Pennsylvania. I see PA is strong. Wales, UK. All right. PA is representing strong here on YouTube, Salem, Oregon. Oki. We see the Okie dokie, pokey hokies. Good to see you. <laughs> Downtown LA. God bless San Diego. Shakarabasata. Ontario, Canada. Bless you. Arkansas. Amen. Huntington Beach. All right. That's down the street from me. Arizona. Amen and amen. Your Rachel Kalena. Well, praise God, people of God. The man of God, Prophet Charlie, does not have much time. So we're bringing him in here. So I want everybody to give the man of God some hearts and likes. Give him a round of applause as we welcome the man of God, Prophet Charlie Sham. Welcome, Prophet, to the broadcast. Hey, God bless you, Pastor Ben. It's great to be on with you today. Hey, we love you. We love your family. Uh, we can't wait to be together in Hawaii. How can you not have revival and glory in Hawaii? That's going to be literally three weeks. Amen. I believe it's a strategic time for the presence of God to hit the islands. And you and I both know that God is raising up new breed revivalists. This is a time for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit of the Lord is wanting to move. Uh, across the nation of America, and that includes the islands. And so we're super excited about being there in Hawaii with you, and we know it's going to be a time of impartation, revelation, and outpouring of the Holy Ghost and fire. 
Yeah, come on. And of course, your wife, Prophetess Bryn, is going to minister too, which is really exciting. I know a lot of the ladies are excited. And it's so encouraging to see her emerge and minister powerfully as well. Why don't you just talk about that real quick? Because I know your wife, uh, Prophetess Bryn, she's powerful and she's dynamic in her own right. But it seems like she's really been emerging as her own voice in the last year or so. Yeah, well, of course, Bryn has always been ministering alongside of me for years. And uh, she's been uh, very, oh, I mean, the 20 years that I've known her, extremely prophetic. And um, it's been great to see her ministering again lately. She just got back from Korea, doing several women's events as well. And then our conference here in Moravian Falls. But uh, I, I told Steve Swanson, and I said, Man, I didn't even want to go after her in the next session because the accuracy of the prophetic with names, addresses, birth dates, just crazy stuff that she was getting from the Spirit of God uh, was, was just amazing. I just wanted her to keep on going. The word of the Lord uh, that she brought was really impactful. So I know that when we're there in Hawaii that she's going to come loaded with the Holy Ghost and she's going to bring what God has uh, in her spirit for those that are in attendance. So it's going to be awesome. Come on. Yes, Lord. And uh, we're going to have Steve Swanson with us as well. So it's going to be explosive, guys. You don't want to miss it. You could come on site, register online, be a part of the online broadcast. But uh, I didn't know what we're going to talk about. It. We're just flowing to the Holy Ghost. But I want to go back to the topic of power couples because I remember – uh, early last year, 2022, I had Dr. Robert Lairdon with us, the author of God's Generals. And we had the twin prophets, Dr. Kim Naim, good friends of ours. And we had your brother and sister-in-law, Prophet Jesse and Amy. And Dr. Robert said, wow, God is raising a power couples again, power team, power duos. Of course, there is uh, the cluster anointing, the corporate anointing. Mm -hmm. But uh what are your thoughts on power couples and the need today, in a sense, for even more power teams, power couples uh, in this generation? Well, I definitely believe that God puts people together on purpose. Like marriage is significant and your spouse carries uh, the, uh, uh, the same anointing that you carry, but maybe possibly even a different aspect of that anointing. And, and so I've noticed over the years as Bryn would minister uh, that I would get revelation and I would begin to flow off of that revelation that she was getting. And it was like a bouncing back and forth. And then the Bible says that if two can touch anything and they're in agreement together, uh, it will be done for them. So everything that has been done as far as our ministry goes has been together. The vision is together. Uh, we, we are one together. Uh, she works a lot behind the scenes. I always tell people that without her, I wouldn't even be in ministry because so many of the things that she just does, not just uh, by ministering, but by way um, of administrating uh, the vision of the ministry helps so much. And then the Bible also says, if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. There's a double anointing. There's a duplication uh, when you see a power couple together moving uh, in their purpose and their destiny. Now, I'm not saying that an individual uh, can't be called into ministry and their spouse is called to a different area, but I believe that God puts people together for a singular purpose of vision, and as they move forward in that vision, uh, God begins to bless. And then I don't necessarily believe that uh, we have to be... Uh, limited to one area. That's one of the things that I love uh, about, you know, my wife is she is a multitasker. So she can do business, she can do ministry, she can raise kids. I oh, mean, it's all of the above. Sometimes I feel limited because I'm like, oh, I, I'm a preacher. I do a little bit of business, but really the mastermind, you know, the brains of the operation, uh, Brent is always behind the scenes working and doing and you know, people think administration is just, oh, typing on computer. But when you're prophetic and you're powerful and anointed, 
administration, you'll begin to see every area of whether it's business or it's ministry accelerate because you have the eyes of an eagle to see. So that's one of the things that is so incredible about Bryn is that she's not only prophetic, she's a seer, prophet, but also she has an anointing for administration. And so she's behind the scenes working, doing all the stuff, uh, making everything flow smoothly, crusades, all the stuff that we got to get done, books that I'm putting out, all those things. And so we're grateful. Uh, I'm grateful. Come on, so hey, I, I I feel the joy of the Lord as you're just bragging on your wife, uh, bragging on Prophetess Brynn. And honestly, uh, I, I believe in this season, we're going to see more and more dynamic women ministers, mm. women apostles, women uh, prophets, women entrepreneurs. I really believe that where there's an attack against women, where there's been an attack against the identity, the gender the calling of woman. I believe God's going to raise up Newbury, Catherine Coleman's, Amy Sippa McPherson's again. And uh, just as you were saying, Prophet, I mean, one of the reasons why, you know, I kind of aired away from the charismatic and I kind of went more into the Pentecostal stream in the last few years is because a lot of the charismatic is too loosey-goosey and it lacks the administration, like you said. Hmm. Yeah, and just as you've just stated, I believe God is raising up new Kathleen Kuhlman's mantles for miracle working women are falling on many in this season. And so we're going to see prophetic voices. I believe power couples, much like uh, the hunters, the happy hunters, we're going to see power couples like that emerge again. Uh, and God is going to begin to raise up revivalists. I believe it is so important that we see revival in the nations. And, and of course, there's all different streams. But as far as it goes for me, I am dedicated to revival, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Spirit, transformation, impartation, the glory of God shaking nations. And, and we want to see this generation set ablaze and set on fire, whether you're 20 or your 80. We believe that God wants to release his fire, his glory, his power, and the Lord's going to do it. As you said, it, God, everything God does is extreme. Well, I believe what's coming is an extreme revival. And the Lord spoke to me years ago, and he said, I asked him, I said, what are, what are, what is, uh, what are you going to do in these end times? He said, I said, what is the next move of God? He said, it's me moving through my people. So the army of the Lord is rising. Joel's army is coming forth. No, and, and people say, well, I, Brother Charlie, I don't feel like I'm called to the fivefold ministry. Forget all of that. Just be a believer that is powerful and affect the area uh, of society and influence that God has given to you. And that's when we're going to begin to see cities shaken, nations shaken, towns shaken, our families shaken, the power of the Holy Ghost to rise in our churches and the spirit of the Lord begin to cover the earth as the water covers the sea. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I feel like the harvest is so ripe right now. And, 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 and I think that a lot of even young people, let's talk about this for a minute, because I believe God is raising up the Gen Zers, uh, even the alpha generation, the, the little ones. I believe we're going to begin to see them like young Isaiah's where they're prophesying. We're going to begin to see them like Isaiah 8, 11 says that these, these are for signs and wonders. 8, 18, excuse me. These, these sons and daughters are for signs and wonders. I believe God wants to raise up the young ones, raise up the kids, raise up the youth, raise up the young adults. And the fire of God touch them and the glory of the Lord begin to move them like a militant army across the land. That's why the enemy's attacking our kids so much, because he, he wants to kind of uh, distort their identity. But I believe the Lord is raising up leaders right now that are going to grab a hold of some young people, shake them with the power of God, and they're going to be set ablaze for the glory of the king. Amen. Oh, amen. Someone say, preach. Prophet Charlie, I mean, that's a true word from the Lord. I remember maybe maybe about, I don't know, three, four, three to four or five years ago, I wrote a word that was posted on Elijah List. 
And the word was the, it, it was like the three M's. And the three M's were the minorities, mm. millennials, mm. and the miracle working woman. Mm. And I released this word about the three M's, the minorities, the millennials, and the miracle working woman. And I really believe that in this season is era. God's raising up minority preachers. I mean, I'm, I'm Korean American and us Asians, we're one third of the world's population and we're grown by the minute, right? But how many true new breed revivalists, apostolic prophetic voices do you see in the Asian community as a whole? Mm -hmm. It's very minimal. I mean, so God is raising up Africans, Asians, uh, Pakistanis. He's raising up a whole new breed of minorities and the millennials or Gen Z now. And as well, even women, I believe the last day's move, we're going to see just a powerful move amongst the demographic of people that have been rejected, that have been scapegoated, that have been pushed out. Because the Bible says the last is the first. And the Bible says that the last nations are going to become the greatest sheep nations in a sense. So if you are a young person, I want you to say amen, or if you're young by faith, amen. And this is a thing, Prophet, I mean, this whole year, we've really been seeing a lot of young people get healed, get delivered, get crazy encounters. We're, we've been seeing a move of God amongst the young people in our ministry. But what seems to be lacking, in a sense, you know, is, yeah, there's all this teaching about deliverance, which is awesome. But there seems to be a lack of hunger or awareness in terms of the prophetic for the I don't know if that makes sense to you, Prophet. No, absolutely. I, I believe that you, you have to understand um, the, the aspect of deliverance, but even more so, we have to understand identity. Because identity uh, is the foundation for keeping and maintaining your deliverance and keeping and maintaining the fire of God in your life. And so, you know, one of the, the things that uh, I don't want to see is people constantly going and getting delivered again and again and again and again and again. And um, that's where impartation comes in. Impartation comes in and begins to release people into their destiny, into their purpose. And the power of the spirit not only causes deliverance, but causes people's eyes to be open to who Christ created them to be. And what Christ and God created us to be is a family, a family unit. So you were talking about power couples. Well, what about power families? What Come about on. entire set on fire for God? All of our children moving in the spirit of the Lord, being used by God to cast out devils, heal the sick, move in miracles, prophesy. And, you know, the Lord told me not to just eat a portion of the lamb, but to eat the whole lamb. Correct. So you can't just pick and choose what area um, of, of revelation you want to you want to have. It, for me in my house, we're going to take it all. Because that's how you come out of Egypt. The children of Israel had the, the, death, the spirit of death pass over their whole family because the blood of the lamb was over the doorpost. And, they, and, the, and the Lord told the children of Israel, eat the whole lamb. So in order to be fully delivered, you can't just say, well, I'm going to take this portion of the word of God and I'm going to leave this portion out or I'm going to believe this part of it, but I'm not going to part of it no i'm a full gospel preacher i believe in prosperity deliverance miracles prophecy the f the the fivefold ministry i believe in uh favor faith uh the glory of god i believe in the anointing of the holy spirit i believe in impartation i believe in angelic visitation i believe in the power of christ in us the hope of glory i believe in third in third heaven Encounters. I believe in face-to-face -face encounters with Jesus. I believe everything that's in this word, if it was given and received by the saints of old, then you and I can have it today. I, I, I refuse to believe that the book of Acts is over with. If Paul could have an encounter with Jesus, 
Brother Charlie can have an encounter with Jesus. If Peter can have an angelic visitation and be sent to another city to, to preach to Cornelius, then I can have an encounter and be sent by God to various locations. If Philip, can, the evangelist, can be preaching revival and great joy fill the city, and the Lord says, go out of the city, and he meets one person, baptizes them in water, and gets lifted up to another place and translated, then I want to believe for that. I'm not going to limit the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to my uh, to some form of doctrinization or a certain movement. I believe that God wants to move afresh and revival and revelation are continuously moving. And just like Bob Jones said years ago, he had a vision of the white horse and he said the white horse was revival. He said it was the move of the spirit. And he said the horse was in the middle of the river and it, the river was flowing. And on the side of the banks were dogs and they were barking. And he said those were the religious spirits. Mm. As long as the, the horse stayed in the middle of the river, the dogs could bark, but they couldn't bite. Mm. This, is a, this, is a, this is a really important uh, revelation that all of you need to receive. If you are having those religiously talking about you, slandering you, uh, trying to diminish what God is doing through you or your encounters or how the Lord is using you, they're, they're, they're barking and they're going after you because you shake, you bake, you roll around the ground, you laugh with joy, you, you get the fire of God, you give uh abundantly above what what religion should tells you to give you you're extreme you dance you shout you 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 do all of the uh, holy ghost things that a believer that's on fire does and all they can do is bark but don't pay them any attention just stay in the middle of the ro river keep flowing in the holy ghost and allow the spirit of god to carry you into the goodness of the lord Amen. Come on, you preaching prophet. Listen, I want you to shout extreme because we're going to get into it right now. Have you ever been called extreme? And I'm asking you all a rhetorical question. Oh, you're too much. You're too much. You're too this. You're, you know, be balanced, right? You need to be grounded, right? I mean, all these people have these safe cautionary words and a lot of them, they're not doing a dang thing, right? But, uh, you know, we're talking about extreme prophetic and the definition of extreme, all right, the definition of extreme in the Webster Merriam def uh, Dictionary, it is the highest degree, okay? The highest degree. I want to say highest degree. How about this? The definition of extreme is Jesus. Jesus is the most extreme. He is the most extreme lover, the most ex generous. The mo he, is the mo he is the highest degree, the highest form. Jesus is extreme. We as believers were meant to be extreme. But we're talking about extreme prophetic because Prophet Charlie, there seems to be, I mean, every season there's always a refining of every stream of every gift, right? We, we absolutely know prophets are for today, amen. We also know that the spirit of prophecy is being poured out upon all flesh more than ever before, according to the book of Joel chapter two. However, in every season there's purifying or refining but there seems to be an attack or there seems to be like shade against prophets and the prophetic, especially even in the last three, four years, you know, from Corona Bologna to today, right? It just seems to be increasing. So let's talk about that prophet because, you know, you're a prophet. I move into prophetic. We're, we're passionate about this, right? And I know God's raising up a new breed of the KC Kansas City type of prophets again. Amen. Amen. Well, I had, a, had been given a word last year and uh, when I was in Wisconsin and the Lord had told me about, uh, he had actually shown me a staff. And some of the viewers may remember this prophetic word I gave, but I had seen a prophet staff that had in, 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 and it was infected. And I said, what? I said, Lord, what is that? He said, that's staff infection but I'm going to remove the infection and the disease from the prophetic movement. Mm. 
And he said, it'll be, there'll be a sign of the fulfillment of this word and extreme snowfall. And we documented that uh, last year in the fall. And so it's not, it's not really uh, a surprise to me that there's been some challenges uh, to uh, the prophetic movement. I, I believe that God is cleansing, he's purifying, he's bringing refining fire to it. But God is calling us to walk in the prophetic power of the Lord. And I think that uh, if I can be very honest with you, uh, Pastor Ben, uh, one of the things that I believe that the Lord is kind of redirecting, he is refining is the inflation of words. The Lord mm. told me that don't allow your words to be inflated. Mm. Speak what, uh, what I've told you to speak, nothing more and nothing less. Because when we, be, when we begin to inflate our words, there's inflation. And just like the, uh, a currency of a nation, the more that it's pr the, the uh, currency is printed, the more it becomes devalued. Wow. The same when people speak flippantly as though they've heard from the Spirit of God or, or, or various, uh, they've, they've seen things in the realm of the Spirit, but they haven't actually seen. Then it causes a murkiness in the waters. So then it also brings a judgment upon true voices. Yeah, people of God, just keep praying right now for Trump to come back, for the audio, for the internet to come back on his side. Hey, prophet, do you hear us? Yes, sir, please go ahead. You're talking about the murkiness and bringing judgment on the two prophets. Go ahead. Yeah, so what happens is when there's a murkiness of the waters, See, I believe that God is bringing purification to the prophetic to the prophetic movement. And while we are all called to prophesy, not everybody's called to be a prophet. But when we come together, then what begins that what begins to be happen um, is there comes a murkiness in the word. We when there's a murkiness in the word then there's a devaluation of the prophetic. Mm. So when we, 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 I hope people are going to get this today because We're catching this prophet, keep flowing, sir. Because when we allow everything to just have this overarching, like, you know, every, every, everything is like prophetic, then there comes a judgment upon from from the religious system upon the prophetic movement now we can all prophesy edification exhortation and comfort but that doesn't necessarily make us uh, a fivefold prophet in the in the in the office of the prophet so i think there's a distinguishing that's happening and of, and of course, if you're called to the prophetic ministry, you're never going to be celebrated. Rel I, I, every prophet is is only celebrated after their death. Oof, Jesus. When you when when a prophet dies, that's when we wish that they were still here prophesying, because religion loves to celebrate the dead, mm. but it refuses to honor the living. Wow. So if you're called to be a prophet. You called into the in, to be a fivefold ministry prophet. You just need to understand that first of all, you're not called to everybody. You're called to individuals. Even the, even Elijah was called to individuals. He was called to the nation overall to prophesy, but the Lord sent him specifically to individuals. When you're in the prophetic ministry, you understand this. You also understand the times and the seasons and the flows of the Spirit. Sometimes you're going to be living in abundance. Other times you're going to be living by a river, being fed by ravens. It's just the nature of the prophetic ministry. There's going to be times where you're celebrated. Oh, oh, you, you heard from the Lord. You got that correct. There's going to be other times, oh, where people feel like you missed it. But the prophet, the true prophet, is always vindicated through time.
right? And also a prophet just doesn't give words of edification, exhortation, and comfort. A prophet that is in the office of a prophet has accurate prophecy for nations. He's a foundational gift to the body of Christ. Mm. So you can be you can be a believer in your church and prophesy, but that doesn't necessarily make you a prophet. Mm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You're teaching good. That's why I'm silent because I'm I'm just receiving just, I, one of the we're seeing a pushback from from uh, some 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 uh, people in different streams is because uh, you ha in order for you uh, to to be for me to acknowledge you as a prophet you you can't just have an edification exhortation a good comforting word there has to be significant things that you've prophesied that come to pass before I, I say, okay, this is the uh, an office of a prophet. But what's happened is, is everyone's been clumped into kind of the same mold, if you say. So like this person over here says, I had an angel of visitation. I was caught up in heaven. Well, there's no weight on their words. There's nothing on it. And, you, and, and anybody that flows in the spirit knows, uh, maybe in your imagination you did that. But what happens is, is because, because, well, I'm a prophet. Now, everybody kind of like says, well, this one's a, this one's a kook. And so then we all get clumped into this thing, or this guy over here was faking a word of knowledge. So then, you know, all the prophets are messed up. No, you cannot do that. You have to keep flowing in the river of God, and you have to keep moving forward with the things of the spirit and recognize the office of a prophet uh, is distinguished by extreme prophetic power as well as signs and wonders and miracles. Mm. Oh, so good. Uh, people, I don't know if you know this, but Prophet Charlie literally just gave a solid teaching, download, lowdown on prophets and the prophetic. There's such gold and such wisdom. And I'm just processing so much that you're saying about the inflation or the popularity, right? Because there's so much popularity. There's such a mass, you know, and uh, and so many people jump on the bandwagon and the trends, you know. Let me say this. If there are those that are watching me that you feel that you're called to be a prophet. So I'm not, if you're called to be a prophet, I'm not talking to you. Right. But your gift is going to be confirmed by the local the local community that you're in, the apostolic hub that you're connected to. If you're a prophet, you're going to be acknowledged, just like Paul in the in the uh, church in Acts 13 and Antioch was seen as a prophet and a teacher. Yes, you will. You will be singled out. At, and, and you will, people will say, you won't call yourself that. People will say and acknowledge you as that, that are leaders in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. The confirmation of the e ecclesia, absolutely. absolutely. Of the elders, absolutely. Um, God calls you, but it's the body that commissions you and recognizes you and gives you the right hand of favor and the stamp of approval in a sense. And, and you don't necessarily need to have the stamp of man's approval to function, but you will function at a fuller level when that promotion comes, because promotion is from the Lord. Um, there's so much that you said, Prophet, but for the sake of time, uh, before we close out and before I have you pray, people of God, if you're enjoying this broadcast, I want you to say amen and give us some hearts and likes. It does so much gold nuggets and impartation that was released now. Um, what are some things that the Lord is showing you, all right, uh, in this season, uh, in America, the body of Christ, et cetera, et cetera? Um, I know we're three months away from Rosh Hashanah. So the Lord is speaking to me, you know, about 5784, the Hebrew year. And just a number of things. And everybody who follows me, you know that I've been uh, sharing these things for the last, you know, we're always sharing all things prophetic, right? 
But what what is something that the Lord's shown you that you feel is important, relevant for this audience today? Now, everyone that is watching the broadcast knows that we're an apostolic, we're a prophetic people, we're a revival people. And we all have the word of the Lord in our mouth if we are seeking God. And the Lord spoke to me specifically, and I started preaching preaching this just several days ago, that the Lord has not only given us eye, new eyes to see, new ears to hear, but he's given us a new mouth. Mm. And God is anointing our mouth, and he is giving us a double portion anointing in our mouth. The Bible says in Luke 21, verse 15, it says, I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversary shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. That's what the Lord is doing right now. There have been uh, words and accusations that have come against people that are watching this broadcast today. And the Lord is going to give you a new mouth, a new authority, a new power in your words. And, the, and wisdom is going to begin to flow out of you. And those that have come against you will not be able, be able to speak against and just for the sake of time, this anointing is a double portion anointing, Pastor Ben. It's firstly what the Lord showed me was an ambassadorial anointing, All right. an ambassadorial anointing on our words, which includes the authority that's in your mouth, strategies for the vision that God has given to you, and resources that are going to fund it. So that's the first anointing that the Lord has given to you in your new mouth, the ambassadorial anointing. There are ambassadors of the spirit of revival that are on the broadcast today, and I want to prophesy and decree over you that there's a new authority in your mouth, that God is releasing blueprints and strategies for the vision that the Lord has given to you, and he's releasing resources for the vision that God is given to you. Where God has given you a vision, there will be. Vision. Yes. So that's the first portion. The second portion is a military anointing. Mm. It's a military anointing that's coming upon your mouth, which is going to be marked by four distinct miracle realms. Number one, mega miracles. The Bible says that the apostles had mega power and mega grace was given to all of those. So there's a mega power that's coming upon the believer through the military anointing, and, you're, and people are going to begin to see mega miracles, mega miracles. Secondly, they're going to begin to see notable miracles. These are miracles that they've been believing God for, that they've written down, that they haven't seen, but they will testify that it was a notable thing that God did. Thirdly, it's diverse Different areas of your life, marriage, family, finances, ministry, business, all of these areas are going to be affected by the miracle realm as you begin to speak. You. Diversity. God is diversifying the miraculous in your life. And then third, and then finally, number four, special miracles. Special miracles. This is an anointing. And people that are watching the broadcast should just lift up their hands right now. Because there's an impartation of special miracles that whatever your hands touch is going to prosper. There's favor upon your hands. There's a favorable anointing upon your hands that when you touch anything, it's going to be blessed. It's going to overflow with blessing. The Bible says that when Paul laid hands on handkerchiefs and aprons as he was working, devils were cast out. I decree and declare over your life. Now, whatever you touch is going to prosper and the demonic powers that have been sent on assignment to confine those areas and restrict you from the performance of God are being broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus mighty name. Come on, someone said, bam. Uh, Prophet Charlie, love you, sir. This broadcast was way too short, but if people... And, and honestly, Prophet, I mean, you have your own grace, which I so love and honor and I've received from personally throughout the years. That's why we love having you. But I, I also know that something happens when people like you and I, we get together and there's a greater dynamic grace that happens. That multiple mm. exponential effect. And friends, if you enjoy this, you need to register 
to our greater glory, Oahu and Hawaii in three weeks. Myself, Prophet Charlie, and Bryn Shamp, and Steve Swanson, three, four days of mega glory outpouring in the Hawaiian Islands. Do you need a vacation? Yes, you do. You absolutely deserve it as well. You've been laboring, you've been plowing, and uh, we would love to see you. If you cannot be there in person, then we'll cry you a river. But as well, you can jump on the online broadcast. Register, register, register. We can't wait to see you there. Prophet Charlie, we love you, sir. Thanks for your time. We cannot wait to see you soon. Listen, I want to tell people that have families, bring your families. I believe that there is an outpouring in this season for family revival. Your children are going to be set on fire. Your marriage is going to be set on fire. Your business is going to be set on fire. Your uh, your 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 career is going to be set on fire. Come on. And the kingdom of God is going to advance you in this hour. And we're moving forward militarily by the spirit of the Lord. And I am excited to see whole family units um, just come under the cloud of God's glory because God is about family. God is about marriage and God is about your call and your destiny. And I tell you by the spirit of God, not one of you are going to fail. Not one of you are going to fall by the wayside. No, you're going to, you're going to be set on the path. And I decree and declare the oil of the Lord, just like the Bible says with Job, that God is oiling up your feet. He is buttering up your path and there's going to be a blessing that is coming. Just keep pioneering, keep pressing forward and we'll see you in Hawaii. Come on, Jesus, for that out of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Amen. Prophet Charlie, love you, my friend. Have a great vacation. We'll see you soon. God bless. Someone shout hallelujah. Let's give it up for the prophet. Wasn't that scrum diddly umptious? Wasn't that? A beautiful all right. My goodness, people I got if you enjoyed that today, I want you to say amen. Wow, wow, wow. God is so good. Amen. Did you receive from the man of God today? I'm telling you, without fail, whenever I come together with Prophet Charlie, um, I put a demand on his anointing. I put a demand on the mantle that he carries. I put a demand, and I know, hear me now, whenever I we come together with anointed men and women of God, it's not a familiar thing. It's not a common thing. It's something where you appreciate and you love and you honor, and boom, it will shift your life. It becomes prophetic markers and signposts of who you are, where you're at, and where you are going. Can I get an amen? So listen, if you are coming to Hawaii for Greater Glory Oahu, or if you are joining online, I want you to comment coming or joining. Amen. I want you to comment coming or joining because it's going to be a meeting, a convergence like none other. Can I get an amen? Well, people of God, real quick, in this prophetic atmosphere, if you receive from the men of God today, clarity, revelation, impartation, I want you to say amen. But in this moment, I want to open up a time for you to sow a seed and to bless the Lord. To bless the work of his hands. Amen. Listen, there's about 71 of you on YouTube, 140 here on Facebook. I want you to sow a seed. And as you sow a seed, I want you to comment extreme prophetic. Okay, I want you to comment extreme prophetic. And I believe an extreme grace and extreme measure. Again, the Webster Miriam definition in the dictionary of extreme is the highest degree. I don't know about you, but I want the highest degree of glory, the highest degree of the fire, the highest degree of the supernatural. Amen. So let's bless the man of God. Let's bless this ministry. Bless and sow into this realm of the supernatural. Amen. So as you sow, I want you to comment extreme prophetic. Amen. And we are going to put up the links and the QR code in different ways to sow and to give. Who knows that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Praise God. And if you receive today, truly you should give back. Do not muzzle the mouth of the ox. Kalena, God bless. Margo, God bless. Amen. Shatarabata. Thank you, Lord. Rena Ben Samuel, God bless. Amen. As you sow, Keisha, bless you. Vero, bless you. 
Vanessa, bless you. I want you to come on Extreme Prophetic. Because God is raising up two polarities. God is raising up, wow, extreme, extremely dull, boring, and snoring on one side, but on the other side, on fire. Providence Ivana, Michelle, Marilyn. Glory, glory. Come on, if you received, I want you to sow and bless the Lord and come an extreme prophetic. And remember, you don't have to give. You get to give. It's an honor. The Bible says, do not come before a man or woman of God empty-handed. C.C. Chosa, bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. That was a powerful broadcast, wasn't it? Amen. Pastor Sharon, bless you. Chanel Jackson, bless you. Rebe Sitarababa. Amen. Where are you watching from, Rena Ben Samuel? Kind of sounds like a Pakistani name. Darley, bless you. Sunshine, bless you. Melissa Filler, bless you. Thank you, Lord. I'm so excited, people of God. I'm so excited about the season that we're in. Season of miracles, greater glory. Vero, bless you. Thank you, Father. And I absolutely agree, concur with Prophet Charlie said, there is a rarity that's coming. A rarity, a distinguishing anointing that is going to distinguish the true voices of God in his hour. Amen. Thank you, Father. You're from Arizona, bless you, Rena. All right, I'm gonna give another 30, 40 seconds for you to sow. And I want to share some announcements before we close today. Amen. But wow, I want you to comment below what ministered to you, spoke to you the most, what you what you got out of this the most. And maybe you're not able to put words on it as of now because you're basking in the glory. But I guarantee you that what the Lord established today it is going to prepare you for the future. Vicky, God bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. God bless you, Claudine. Shalom. Thank you, Lord. Praise the living God. I want all of you to lift up your hands. Father, I thank you that you are giving a fresh release and impartation. For the new breed prophets, revivals to arise. Unstoppable favor, unstoppable momentum, undeniable favor, anointing, presence, undeniable. Your fr the, the fruit of miracles will be undeniable. Amen. The fruit of the miracles will be so undeniable in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you receive it and believe it, I want you to say amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, people of God, real quick, I want to share some announcements before we close. Uh, of course, Hawaii. Come on, someone say aloha. All right, thank you, Ready, Set, Pro, bless you. Felipe Guzzi, bless you. Kim Amsterdam, bless you. We're going to be in Hawaii. Myself, Prophet Charlie Shab and Brent Shab. And Steve Swanson in Hawaii. If you're not able to come in person, which you really should, because it's Hawaii. Amen. It's Hawaii. Something happened once you get off the plane in Hawaii. I'm telling you. That's why I go there multiple times a year. And we love the Hawaiian Islands. Hawaii is still part of the United States as well. Amen. But uh, I believe a volcano is going to erupt in the spirit and in the natural. So. Be on the lookout for that. But we're going to be in Hawaii. So come and see us in Hawaii. Uh, July 27th to the 30th. Myself, Prophet Charlie Shamp and Brendan Shamp and Steve Swanson. If you're not able to come in person, join us online. Join us online. 
and be a part of the online broadcast family. You won't regret it. Amen. As well, uh, I'm coming to Samoa, friends. I'm going to another island, and I'm going to American Samoa. I'm going to Apia. So praise God for that. I've not been in Samoa in a number of years. Thank you, Avini. But I'm going to be in Samoa, and we're doing two events there. Well, my great friends, Apostle Cruz Westerland and uh, SNL, SNF, the Supernatural Family. My good friends there in Samoa, Apia Samoa. Uso. So pray for me, pray for us, because we're believing for a mighty move in the island of Samoa. Amen. So my July season is really comprised of Samoa and Hawaii. Samoa and Hawaii. Not a bad July, ain't it? Who knows? The islands need the fire of God as well. The islands need the glory of God as well. Amen. So pray for us in that. Amen. And uh, I have a webinar coming. And my next webinar is going to be, it's quite far away, but it's August 28th. Effective spiritual warfare. I want to teach you how to not only be effective, but be victorious. I want to teach you how to live a life of throne room living. How to exercise your authority in Christ Jesus. Are you undergoing spiritual warfare? Are you battling depression? Are you battling cycles, patterns, attacks in your life? Effective spiritual warfare. I want to talk to you about how to be effective in spiritual warfare. Amen. You're either advancing or you are retreating, backtracking. So all of our Zoom webinars are for free. So go ahead and register and join us. Share with a friend. Amen. As well, I have an online group mentorship. Thank you, Margaret Kay. I have an online group mentorship called 7M Glory Equip. 7M Glory Equip. And I believe in the power of mentorship. I believe in the power of, of impartation. And in these days, we need to be around mighty men and women of God. So I would love to mentor you. I would love to pour into you, love to walk with you. And if you join our 7M Glory Quit, what is included at least twice a month, you we have private Zooms at least twice a month for teaching and partition. Number two, if you join my mentorship, you are included in a private Telegram group where we build community with other like-minded spirits and minds, incredible kingdom world changers. And number three, you have greater proximity, connection, and covering by myself. The one only Dr. Pastor Ben Lynn. So if you enjoy and appreciate the grace that's in this ministry take a step further join the seven and glory equip and let me tell you you will not regret being a part of this online group mentorship amen now people of god i want to invite you to share this broadcast to follow me on instagram tiktok youtube and here on facebook subscribe 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 like, 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 share, share, share. And as well, I guess today, I'm going to be opening up a thread. So, love you, bless you. I hope you enjoyed this. We hope to see you in Hawaii. Register, register, register. Love you, bless you. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with Extreme Prophetic with our beloved guest, Prophet Charlie Shamp. God bless. See you next time. Thank you.